Hey there, Marcus Hutzel here, and in this video, I wanted to expand on the topic of proper mic placement and how it can affect your audio quality and the isolation of your voice. And basically, I wanted to talk about the two main types of microphones, dynamic mics and condenser mics, that you might need to choose between for your virtual meetings, your own YouTube videos, or even client recordings. Because no matter whether it's a virtual meeting, live content, or recorded content, Microphones still just work on basic physics, so this information applies to anyone using a microphone. I'll link to my initial video on this topic down below and hopefully up here in the corner, so be sure to watch that. And to summarize that video, basically the closer the mic is to you, the more direct your voice will sound and the mic will pick up less room noise or less reverb of your space and you'll just get a more isolated sound of your voice and you won't sound drowned out or like you're in a large room during those virtual meetings and recordings. So with the basic knowledge and rule of closer means more isolated and less room sound, it's important to keep in mind the type of microphones that work best in certain situations so we can determine how close we can be to a particular mic and how far we can place other types of mics if we don't want them seen in our camera view because not all mics work best right up against your mouth and some mics don't work well even at short distances away. So it's good to determine, or maybe you already know, if you do or do not want that mic within your camera view and seen by your audience, because this will help you in picking out a type of mic that works best for your situation. And throughout this video, I'll be using several different microphones and I'll put on screen which one you're hearing because I have about five microphones I'm using right now for this video. Three of them mounted up here overhead and two of them on boom arms that I'll move into place when I'm using them. So to simplify this topic, there are two basic types of microphones that we'll see and use in our home offices for virtual meetings, dynamic mics and condenser mics. And we can generally think of dynamic mics as being not very sensitive to sound waves and therefore dynamic mics work best and usually need to be very close to you. And we can think of condenser mics being just much more sensitive to those same sound waves in the air. And that means they can be placed a bit further away if needed and often they may need just a bit of extra distance so we don't distort them. There is one last category or option of mics to use for virtual meetings, and that's headset mics. They're a bit of a different category. This video really focuses more on traditional microphones and the basics and best way to use them, but headset mics can be a good option for virtual meetings depending on your visual and auditory needs, but I'll touch on those another time. So a couple of things. Number one, the physical look of the mic doesn't always tell you whether it's a dynamic mic or a condenser mic. You'll have to ensure you know by checking the documentation as to what type it is because microphones come in all shapes and sizes and it doesn't always say on the mic itself. For example, both of these mics look very similar, but one is a dynamic mic and one is a condenser mic. So make sure you know what type of mic you have or what type of mic you need. And number two, it doesn't matter if the mic is a traditional analog XLR style mic that requires an additional USB audio interface to get into your computer, or whether it's a direct USB mic, those are just different connection types that allow us to plug these mics into different pieces of equipment. These days, a lot of microphones have some sort of USB equivalent model or actually have both USB and XLR connections, and there's usually a very similar model to a standard XLR mic that does have USB connectivity to just make our digital lives a little easier. All right, so let's talk about dynamic microphones. Now, dynamic microphones like a Shure SM7B or its USB cousin, the MV7, or even this Shure SM58 that I'm using right now, being overall a lot less sensitive to sound waves are usually going to need to be very close to you so that the sound waves from our voices are able to move the diaphragm of the mic enough to produce a strong audio signal down the cable and into our computers. They need that stronger air pressure most of the time, and because they are less sensitive, they can also handle the sound pressure of our voices right against them, kind of like you're seeing me do now. So in that sense, dynamic mics are great if you tend to laugh or get boisterous or raise the level of your voice often because they won't distort as quickly as condenser mics when that sound pressure from a close source is hitting their diaphragms. So conversely, if we place a dynamic mic further away, like using this Shure SM58 as more of a boom mic, boomed way up and overhead, kind of like I have my other condenser mics, we may not be able to turn it up enough to make our voice loud enough to generate a strong audio signal from dynamic mics. You can see I've got the gain almost all the way up on my preamp right now, and it's still not quite loud enough 
for the software. I've had to go into this video edit and manually amplify this just to make it loud enough for you to hear in this video. Otherwise, the audio from this mic at this distance is just usually too low and therefore too quiet. And that's going to be the case for most dynamic mics when placed far away because they are designed to work most efficiently closer to the sound source. And if placed too far away, and if the resultant audio is just too low, our software or virtual meeting platforms will also have to further amplify dynamic mic signals if we can't gain it up enough for a strong audio signal. And of course, having them further away and having to turn them way up or boosting with software means that we'll capture and hear more of that ambient sound of your room, making us potentially sound more drowned out and distant. And we'll be boosting system noise or hiss along with that signal. And that's basic signal to noise ratio. If our main audio signal is low, it's closer to the noise floor of whatever equipment we have it plugged into. And when we boost and post in software, we then boost everything so we bring up the noise with our main audio signal. So, in general, you usually want dynamic mics close, kind of like this. All right, moving on to condenser mics. We can generally think of condenser mics as just being much more sensitive to air pressure or sound waves in the air. So we have a few more options of placement depending on the model. Specifically, and again, if you want your microphone completely out of view from your audience so it's not seen by the camera much like I'm doing now and much like you see in most of my videos, you're almost always going to want to select a condenser microphone over a dynamic mic. And that's because condenser mics, again, being more sensitive to sound waves, will still be able to pick up and produce a strong audio signal at slightly further distances from the sound source. And that means less amplification in software and less chance of adding noise to our final audio signal. So there are a few subcategories of condenser mics and I'll start with large diaphragm condenser mics like this very budget friendly, but really great sounding fine large diaphragm condenser USB mic. Large diaphragm condenser mics are also generally designed to be placed close to you, kind of like I'm using this mic, but as you can see, I can have a little bit more distance between me and the mic. And as you can see, I'm also not aiming my voice directly at the mic itself. I'm a little bit off axis because I don't want to potentially distort this more sensitive microphone. So if very close, you may need to add an additional pop filter between you and the mic to stop the air from your breath, hitting the mic capsule, and again, potentially distorting it. But since condenser mics are more sensitive, you can give them about three to six inches more distance than a dynamic mic if you want, but always remember the closer means more isolated rule so that you don't start to sound distant because in more reverberant environments like rooms with lots of hard surfaces, like hard floors and lots of windows, Condenser mics will really pick up a lot of the room noise when you start to move them away from you. I have an example of this in my previous video where I'm using a condenser mic in my much more reverberant dining and living room, so give that a listen. And keeping the mic close is especially important in shared office spaces where you don't want the mic to pick up, you know, people walking by or noises from the hallway or the next office. So you have a bit more freedom in placement with condenser mics, but still try to keep them close. Then we have small diaphragm condenser mics like the Sennheiser MKH-50, which I'm not using, but that one is truly meant for capturing dialogue and the human voice. But it is a professional microphone and it comes with a professional price of about $1,200. For office or virtual meeting environments where you just need a decent sounding mic and have no need to spend a lot of money, there are other options like this tiny Audio-Technica AT2021, which I'm using right now, and that's what you're hearing and it only comes in at about $90. Now, a lot of these styles, small diaphragm condenser mics can sound great as you can hear, but also usually cannot be in the direct path of any airflow like your breath. Even the $1,200 MKH-50 can suffer from distortion if air hits it in a particular area. So they need to be mounted out of the way of any air or wind or even your breath hitting them. And as you can see from the side shot, I have the Audio-Technica AT2021 mounted just overhead out of my video frame and also out of the direct path of my breath. And be aware that even ceiling fans can induce some distortion on mics like this if the air hits it in the wrong way. So it's best to add either a foam wind cover like I have, or I've actually found that one of the more furry wind covers like this one do a much better job at reducing windboard distortion. And since a lot of small diaphragm condenser mics like the AT2021 are actually designed for miking musical instruments like drums, guitars, and louder sound sources, 
they may take more gain from your preamp or more digital amplification and software to further get them to a good level. For example, this Audio-Technica AT2021 takes a lot of input gain, as you can see here on my Scarlett 2i2 interface that I'm using for input into my computer to record this. And you can get enough level out of it if mounted close, and it sounds great if you position it well. And I use this AT2021 in my small semi-open office space at work, and it does well enough, again, when mounted overhead and really close to me. But most small diaphragm condenser mics that are designed to capture vocals won't require as much gain. And these style of mics can be a good choice if physical space is an issue because they're usually fairly small. All right, moving on to shotgun mics. Shotgun mics are also another type of small diaphragm condenser, but they have an additional feature of an interference tube, which means the actual mic capsule picking up the sound is down inside and at the rear of this tube. So it's a little more protected from some wind and air noise. And the interference tube is also designed to take in sound from the sides and do its best to attempt to cancel out some of that sound from the sides resulting in most shotgun mics being a little more directional, a little bit more isolating, depending on the acoustics of your room. And you can also usually place them far enough away to be out of your video frame, but I still always keep them as close as possible, most often, again, mounting them directly up here over my desk where I've got the Rode VideoMic NTG mounted, as well as this Rode NTG5, which I got recently and I've been testing here in my home office. Just remember shotgun mics aren't the best choice for every environment, but they work well in less reverberant rooms. So they work well in rooms with carpeting and soft goods that absorb the sound reflections and have less reverb. And XLR style shotgun mics, at least decent ones, can get expensive starting at around $350 and going up from there. But my favorite two options in this category are the $250 Rode VideoMic NTG, which I've owned since it was released and its smaller cousin, the Rode VideoMic Go 2, which is what you're hearing now. And it's probably the best small USB shotgun mic for most people in their home offices because it's small, it's only $100, it's very user-friendly with no exterior buttons to mess with. But of course you can set some parameters via the Rode Central software if you wish. It's a USB mic, so it plugs directly into your computer and it sounds really great. And again, that's what you're hearing right now. It's a great mic and won't break the bank. So to recap, dynamic mics, keep them very close. Large diaphragm condenser mics, keep them close and add a pop filter if you want to have it right up against your mouth. Small diaphragm condenser mics, generally try to mount overhead and keep them out of the way of your breath and other windborne noises. Shotgun condenser mics, generally also mount overhead if needed. However, most shotgun mics can handle more direct sound pressure like this Rode VideoMic NTG. So experiment, listen, and make sure you aren't distorting the microphone or the software. So decide if you do or do not want a microphone in your video frame. Choose the type of mic that works best for that situation. Be sure you're aware of how that microphone will react to sound pressure or air on its diaphragm and position your mic as closely as you can to not distort it and to make your voice sound as isolated as possible and cut down on how much the mic picks up the sound of your room because we want to hear you, not your room. I really hope some of this information has been helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.